what if you could take all these loose threads that you save because we're all compulsive savers when you snip the ends of threads off of things and you could turn them into something like this. How cool is that? This is called cordage and this is my version of it. I just learned how to make this recently. Thank you to Alice Fox and the wonderful class I took from her. And I have been trying to think of something I could do to use up more of my threads. You guys have seen me do some things with my mini spirit sticks and my clusters. This is one more thing we can do with those. So let me show you how. And the best thing about this, as far as I'm concerned, is you don't need any special equipment. Now those were made with threads. This one was made with just two pieces, with pieces of fabric. So another thing for fabric scraps. And this one, how cool is this? So it's getting bigger. This could be a great journal tie. Is made from those little seams that we cut off. Like this would be like from a sheet or a curtain or maybe the seam from a shirt. And I saved those and turned it into this. So I found the easiest way to learn how to do this was with a strip of fabric. Okay, and this is a little more than a quarter inch wide. And any kind of fabric would work. And maybe the only thing you might want to have would be a water bottle or a sponge uh, something to get your fingers or the fabric damp. And you want to start with kind of a long piece. This is not quite a yard. This is probably about two feet um, because you're going to be folding it part way to get things started. So I just want to get my hands wet just a little bit. And once you get the technique down, you can apply it to just about anything. So you take it and you want to have them uneven so that when you join them, the joins are in different places. And you're just gonna start, I'm gonna hold it in one hand and twist. Now I'm right-handed, but you'll find that when I do the actual cordage making thing, I switch to a left-handed version. Uh, it just feels better in my hands, but either way works the same. And you just wanna keep twisting it until it's gonna start to kink up on itself. See that little kink happening? And that's gonna be my handle to hold on to. That's the very top of our piece of cordage, okay? So now you got these two strips and you're just gonna do one twist away and over. One twist away, and you're gonna pull the one behind it and flip it over. One twist away from you. I'm gonna take this bottom one and go under and pull the twisted one toward me. And as I do that, I'm just moving my finger down just a little bit. Now the first ones I did, I didn't pay attention to where my thumb was when I was doing this, and so I got very loose cords. So you do wanna kinda of hold on, you know, just move your thumb down as you do it. And also, you don't twist a whole bunch of times, it's just one twist is plenty. I am far from a pro at this. I just learned this this week, so there'll be a lot of basket makers and cordage makers out there that I'm sure will give lots of tips in the comments, and that's awesome. I love it when we share our knowledge. But I did find that learning this with a piece of fabric first was great, and then honestly, I've spent the last couple days making cordage out of anything I can, and there'll be a, a lot more videos coming forward showing you the different things, but today I wanna to show you about threads. And that's all that is, okay? And it becomes stronger, of course, as we bind it together. So let me show you again, that's just twist it away and bring the twisted part over and the other one goes behind. Lots of people have great videos on how to make cordage. If you just go search for how to make cordage,
You will find people making it out of paper. You can do this with newspaper. I did one with packing paper. Okay, so that's the basics. So now, what about when we wanna use our threads? What do we do? We need something that we're gonna be able to twist, right? So what I do, I mean, I just, I love these. Look at how strong these are. These were my cut threads. These are all my little loose bits of thread. I mean, I'm sure my husband and I could play tug of war and, war and it would break, but I just, uh, I can totally picture doing this if I was doing some um, some of the handmade uh, tag challenge that's going on right now, you could totally do this with some couching. You could use it to hold the top of a tag. You could do it as a journal, lots of things you could do. So let's make some, all right? So what I found it to be easiest is to get my long pieces done ahead of time. Get some of them just so I could get started. Because then what happens is once you get the technique down on how to just do the twist, you can sit there and be watching YouTube videos and doing it all day long. Now, if you want really fine, let me see if I can show you here. So in the beginning here, I've got some that's very, very fine. And then it gets different sizes. Now, I like that. I really wanted something that was going to have a variety of sizes. The thinner your initial pieces are to start with, the thinner your, your cordage is going to be. So as you can see, this started with, it's actually double pieces of fabric because it's a seam. So this is much thicker than something like this. This is just two pieces of fabric, so it's not quite as thick as this. So if you want something really, really fine, you're going to have to you know, maybe just do two threads together. But I was more concerned about how I could use up all these scraps. And so you want to get some long pieces to start with. All right, so there are a couple ways you can do that. Let's work on my blue one. And again, you need no equipment but some water. You could spit on your hands, but you're going to run out of spit before too long. This is really a great way to use up any, this is that fine bits of sari silk. And I just, I love using that because it kind of helps, you know, bind the other stuff together. This is some very stiff thread. And it's probably what was like at the end of a roll. I'm gonna use a pair of scissors just to cut off a piece of it. It does not have to be long straight pieces like this, so. Let's get some short ones. And you get this wonderful mix in your threads that just, I don't know, I think it looks fabulous. I love it so much. All right, so you could, it's gonna take you a little longer, but you could just twist it kind of loosely with your fingers. And the very first one I did, that's exactly what I did. These are all just finger twisted together so it's a little fatter. I wasn't trying to get skinny things. And I got that long thread there. Oh, here's a little something cut from some fibers. I can just twist that in there. Now here's where if you've got a fat thing like that, add some water to it and twist it. You know, and you're not expecting all of this to stay together. You just want to get it to hold together enough that you can start to twine it. So I've got some extra of this blue here. I'm gonna put it up here where it's just one thread. And this is just, like I said, very loosely. Now you can't really roll it on this, but you can roll it on your thigh. And it's helpful if you have jeans on. If you don't have jeans, you can cut a piece of denim. And I like this because then I can just come along and I can spray stuff. And then I'm just gonna roll it. Now, you know, if you're a spinner, you could obviously spin this into something that would be a little bit more like thread. But again, the whole idea of this is just to use what we have here. We don't need anything else. I will warn you, if you start rolling this on your thigh, your thigh is going to get sore. 
and I have been told uh, you can wear a hole in your pants. So uh, I just put this over my lap and that works really well, but this is easier for the film. So if you want it tighter, just keep dampening it and you can really, you can go back and forth. And as you do that, you're sort of moving your fingers down the threads. Get it wet. And you're stretching it. So this is getting just a little bit longer. And again, I'm not trying to get everything the same thickness. It does make a difference in the type of cordage. I wanted something that was going to be kind of bumpy. Now I've got my nice long piece. Let's get it started. And you don't worry about these little loose things like this. You can go ahead and try and put them in there a little more if you want. If you're really bothered by it, grab a little bit of the sorry stuff. So now you got your nice long piece. Okay. And I don't want to go in half because that's going to put my joins at the same spot. So instead of in half, I'm going to go about like that. And I'm just going to start my twist. And I'm just looking for that kink. There it is. All right. And then I'm going to hold it. And now I'm just going to twist away and bring it over, twist away and bring it over, moving my finger down. And it'll take no time at all before you'll be doing this without even watching it. Once you get that initial twist, sometimes my twists come a little bit undone at the top. I think it's just going to get better with practice, tie a knot in it if it bothers you. But uh, just doing this for the last few days, I've gotten better at it. I'm going to get down to where we can do a join. These would make great friendship bracelets if you want to do this with your kids. I said you could use them for ties to close a journal, put them on the top of a tag. Do some little stitching. All right. And see, we're getting all this nice, bumpy stuff. I think it's just going to be really great. I can't wait to use these on my nature clusters. A little bit further so I can do a join. So if you have made cordage before, let me know. I will be doing some with natural materials, but I figured I would start with a way for us to use up our threads. Okay, so now I've got a short piece here, so I need something else. If I'd have had all my blues done up ahead of time, I would just be picking up another piece of that, but let's just make a short piece. And I'm just gonna hand twist it. Oops, I don't want that green in there. And I'm just going to hand twist this just enough that I can do a join. So let's see, it's, it's not going to hold together if you do this, but it's enough to get you to start to do the cordage, and then it's going to hold together. I just like the, uh, the thigh rolling because it gets it a little stronger to start with. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can lay it over so there's a little bit sticking out the other side and then you can just cut that off when you're done or if you leave a really long piece you could tie something to it or I'm going to try and just put it right here in the middle I'm going to just lay it on top of my back piece and I'm just going to twist it and that one I'll give it a couple of twists And now I've got two long pieces. You can see I'm just holding those together and it's just gonna weave in to the main part of the cordage. And then pretty soon I'll just have the two pieces here. So see, I'm just about to the end there. 
and because the second piece I put on is hand rolled rather than you know really thin it's going to give me some nice bumps which just add some great texture when you're stitching it down on something and now I'm down to just one piece and that's what you get from all these little bits of thread how cool is that I just I hope you like this I really this is my newest addiction so I'm going to be doing this a lot while we're watching TV in the evenings, I can tell. Let me know down in the comments if you have made cordage before, if you like this way of using up your threads, any tips you might have to pass on to people. I hope you will come back and see me again. Join the Facebook group if you want so we can share support and connect with one another. And I will see you next time. Go have some fun making art. Bye-bye for now.